In this screencast, you're going to learn all about the normal distribution, also known as the Gaussian distribution. The normal distribution is the most widely used model for the distribution of a continuous random variable. It oftentimes fits real world data well, but keep in mind that there is real world data out there that doesn't necessarily have to fit the normal distribution. There's a lot of different types of distributions. Histograms often have the shape of the normal distribution. It's an approximation that models real world quantitative phenomena quite well. It's also known as the Gaussian distribution or the bell shaped curve. Human height, for example, follows the normal distribution very well. The density function for the normal distribution is given here. It's very complex, complicated. I definitely do not expect you guys to memorize this. We have something known as the mean, which is mu, and sigma, which is the standard deviation. I'll talk about the standard normal distribution in a follow-up screencast, but it's a special case of the normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. The standard normal density function used to be used quite a bit before we had sophisticated software tools uh, like Excel and MATLAB and MathCAD and Mathematica, but it is still useful in some scenarios. We are rarely interested in f of x for continuous distributions. Uh, the exception is when we want to visualize the distribution or prepare a plot, and I'll show you how to do this in Excel in a moment. Instead, we're oftentimes interested in the cumulative function. Recall, probabilities for continuous variables are obtained by integrating f of x. If we want to calculate the probability that x lies between two values a and b, we would just integrate little f of x from a to b. There is no analytical solution to the following integral. So this integral down here, there's no closed form, nice expression for capital F of x. Instead, what we can do is we can calculate f of x numerically. So luckily, the integral can be approximated quite accurately by numerical calculation. And we can also use Excel's norm.dist function. So instead of integrating, we can always use the cumulative distributions, also known as capital F of x. Recall that the probability that x lies between a and b, if we know the cumulative distributions, capital F, we can just subtract capital F of A from capital F of B. In other words, if you wanted to calculate the probability that the random variable lies between A and B, you would calculate the cumulative, capital F, all the way up to B. That would be capital F of B. And then you would subtract that first little bit, which is capital F of A. So the difference between that would leave you just with the probability that you are interested in calculating. In fact, using the differences in cumulative distributions is the most common and easy way to determine probabilities related not only to the normal distribution, but all sorts of other continuous probability distributions. For the normal distribution, there's a norm.dist function in Excel, and it's very helpful for working with normally distributed random variables. If you don't have access to Excel on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to have to standardize everything and convert it to the standard normal distribution and use tables in the back of your book. Let's go through an example. X is a normally distributed variable. Mean equals 10. Standard deviation equals 4. What is the probability that X will be less than 6? This is our distribution. This is f of X. What we're interested in doing is determining the probability that X lies underneath the curve less than six. So really we could go to really small values, in fact, theoretically down to negative infinity, and we need to calculate or integrate the area underneath that curve. One way to do this is to numerically integrate using a computing tool. Uh, here I think this is uh, MathCAD or Mathematica, and you can have it numerically integrate and we get about a 16% chance. That means 16% of the distribution of the area lies less than six. Another way to do this is to use Excel's norm.dist function. In a little bit, I'll show you some more examples of using this, but there's a cumulative form. You always want to use true as the last argument in the norm.dist function if you're trying to calculate cumulative distributions. The first argument is the x value, six in this case. Then you have your average of your distribution and then your standard deviation. So we had mu and sigma that have been named. And again, I'll show you how to do this in a minute. Let's work through a follow-up example. 
Same scenario, what is the probability that x lies between 8 and 16? So in other words, what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the area underneath this curve. Remember, if we're talking about a probability density function, the total area is 1. And so the integral of f of x dx between 8 and 16 here would be the probability that x lies between 8 and 16. Let's go ahead and do this in Excel. Before we solve this, let me just show you how I created this plot. And again, you're rarely interested in just little f of x unless you're making a plot, for example, in Excel. Here I've named mu cell b1, sigma cell b2, and I just typed in norm.dis of our x values here. I'm creating a bunch of x values between 0 and 20, mu, sigma, and false for non-cumulative. And then you can plot this in a nice line graph. So what we're trying to do is determine the probability that x lies between 8 and 16. A good way to do this, again, is to take the cumulative distribution up to 16. That would be that entire region. And then we're going to subtract out the region that's up to 8. So we're going to subtract out that. So this is f of 8. And the entire thing that I initially drew was f of 16. So if we take f of 16 minus f of 8, then that's going to be the solution. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take norm.dist of 16, comma mu, comma sigma, comma true. That's a cumulative up to 16. And we're going to subtract the same thing for up to 8. And when we do that, we end up with there's a 62.4% chance that x will lie between 8 and 16. So that's how we can calculate this probability with this shaded region. Let's go through another couple of probabilities because these are somewhat important. Part A, probability that x lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Oftentimes, this is important to know. What about two standard deviations of the mean and three standard deviations of the mean? First, let's do this for one standard deviation from the mean. So I've got this big, long formula. I'm taking f of mu plus sigma and subtracting capital F of mu minus sigma. And in that case, we get 68.2. So there's about 68.2% of the distribution lies within one standard deviation of the mean. I'm going to go ahead and copy this formula and paste it in these two. Let's look at two standard deviations, mu plus 2 times sigma, mu minus 2 times sigma. That means 95.5% of the distribution lies within two standard deviations of the mean. And finally, let's do this for three standard deviations. So I can replace this with three standard deviations. And that means about 99.7% of the population lies plus or minus within three standard deviations of the mean. And some of you have probably already seen this in another course or somewhere else. 68% lies within one standard deviation of the mean, 95 within two standard deviations, and about 99.7 within three standard deviations of the mean. So hopefully you learned a little bit more about the normal distribution in this screencast. Thanks for watching.